All right, the time to end this. Uh, Roll credits. That's the title of the game. I'm sure <laughs> everything will be solved just fine now. Also, for the record, audience, we're recording this the same day that uh, Swan Call Me Johnny's review is actually being uh, being released. They did not, uh, sadly, gave me enough time to actually give it a look, so I, w I will not be able to even I could compare what he might think uh, on the game or anything. So, apologies in advance on that. But uh, <coughs> anyway, because we're actually close to the explosion of the singularity, this is where time starts to dwindle a bit uh, in terms of contraptions. Um, and occasionally we get uh, people from the past being teleported against us uh, or us being teleported in the past at random. So it's a roller coaster until we get to the, to the point. I guess so. Okay, the last couple of uh, audio logs that we will get actually are from Dr. Demichev uh, in regards also to, um, to Dr. Barisov, uh, so it's interesting to see. Oh, shit. What was that? Another yeah, maybe, mutant? That mutant yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure it's, if it's because of how uh, T.O. paces the parts, but um, these kinds of PS3 games are surprisingly short. Well, the, the length in general, some of these are short, and trust me, compared to the one uh, that I recorded that uh, we will see after um, after this, uh, um, this is still relatively long, uh, actually, like in terms of length. Uh, um, the Raven Studios at least uh, manages to scrap what they had to make a relatively long plot, uh, you know, uh, long campaign single player wise not so much with the game that i recorded which we will see after this which instead was kind of a last desperate hurrah from uh, from a publisher that was kind of on its way out mm -hmm. so in terms of wrap up would you say that this game at least manages to wrap things up with a good bow or it's a bit well, you're about, you, you we will be able to see Jova, because sure. we're basically at the end. Um, the most important stuff of those does get resolved, but I can tell you this, uh, despite the multiple endings, I can get, I can get a general idea that uh, a, a lot of people might not be satisfied uh, with the conclusions of this game. Like you have again, made we'll it have clear, the development for this game was kind of rough. beyond belief, uh, yeah. The end product, remember, the end product is clearly not the same as the one the studio envisioned at first. Uh, it's already a miracle it exists back in the first place. Uh. I guess later you can deliberate, like, just how different it is from the original vision. No, unfortunately, one thing that I still think from the beginning is that I do not know how much um, information do we have on what the original had, aside from what I just said. Like, stuff about the aging, the soldiers and stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. Although it sounds like, as opposed to this, okay, was this a case of it taking way too long and eventually they just had to rush it, or was it just well, about of gotta do what the boss says eventually? And as I mentioned in the early parts, uh, the the game was conceived uh, mostly for PC, but when it came to actually 
uh, having the ambitious idea that they had uh, been transplanted for consoles, the game started to have a lot of problems and to the point where it was just here to be cancelled properly. At that point, Activision actually stepped in and ordered the team to actually get, uh, you know, had to, uh, get what they had. Uh, you know, and make a final product uh, with, ah. uh, with what they could scrap together again. So, so if I understand correctly, this was originally just supposed to be a PC game that got forced onto consoles. A more yes and no. In a sense that, uh, like I said, Raven Studios work better on PC and has worked better on PC alone. Um, but uh, so we essentially overestimated their capabilities when it came to making the game. I Simple could see. That. Yeah. Remember the the X Men Origins Wolverine video game did not really have this kind of problem because it was conceived for multiple consoles. And the only major difference is that I think the Wii version doesn't have by proper you know violence and gore. But uh, yeah, honestly, um, okay, look, I don't think that they necessarily had problems with port. Well, okay, more so, I don't think that they had absolutely no know-how on how to port it. What I do think, though, is that suddenly adding on the need to port this to other consoles could have thrown a wrench into the development, because while ports do seem simple, they are not always easy to do for varying reasons. So I could see how that may have thrown a wrench into things like how that may have slowed down the development or forced them to have to do some things that may not have even really been as technically sound on consoles which were still way less powerful than PCs back in the day so I could it also really is um, a case-to-case -case scenario because in comparison each software for out of nowhere did manage to create a game rage around this time who forced like to my incredible shock manages to run on the console xbox 360 and especially ps3 at a solid 60 frames per second sure really it has a bit of, it has a bit of texture pop in but it sure as hell still manages to work out 60 um, frames per front. second in the seventh gen of gaming is definitely nothing to <laughs> well it, it's nothing to scuff and at for for reference uh, when it came to the ps3 companies like um um you know Sanzaru with uh, with Sly 4 and uh, Insomniac with the early PS3 Resident and Clank games did manage to achieve 60 frames, but they had to sacrifice a bit on the performance, similar a bit to the performance model of modern consoles. To transplant on that, it would be the equivalent to having a 480p and 60 frames per second. And it is a bit noticeable, especially we will see it, especially we start with a game like, say, uh, Tools of Destruction. Nowadays, when it comes to porting games to consoles, the only real potential troublemaker, depending on the circumstances, would be the Switch. Mm, uh, again, it, it real Okay, honestly, dudes, there are still a lot of cases where a port can pretty much be messed up on any console, even in the 8th gen of gaming. And that's not something to blame on the Switch so much as it is to blame on the laziness of devs. Who do not do either a proper port to the Switch, or try and, well, do but, the stupid... But here's the thing, this, the, the Switch was very much outdated by the time it even came out. All the same, though, hardware. all the same, though, as devs have shown, if you do a proper porting job, it'll be just fine on the Switch. Mortal uh, Kombat? Hmm? Mm. Yep, Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, what about Mortal Kombat 11? Well, uh, we were agree we were backing you up. That's oh, an yes. Of one. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, yes. Mortal Kombat 11 is definitely an example of a port done well. Also, look at something like the Crash Insane trilogy, which that had to be done okay, by okay. one person. I can't believe that. Yeah, I, and um, loading times aside, I heard um, Crash Team Racing Night Review was good on Switch. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Is. Like, again, this is why I say that I know, I know, the Switch is apparently a bit low powered, but no, really, like, you don't have to, like, it is still very well possible to port these games to it and have them function fine. Do you have to downgrade some of the looks? Sure, but mechanically, they can work, which is just what oh, makes can. lazy or just extremely badly done ports to the Switch just all the more frustrating in that regard. 
It's one of those things where it depends. It, there's also, uh, you also have to remember that each case is a case when it comes to this. Like, for example, let me use Dragon Quest XI, because Dragon Quest XI was originally made as a PS4 slash PC game, without because when it started development, the Switch wasn't a thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, so later when it, and they talked about how apparently when the Switch originally came out, uh, it still didn't have library, software libraries to, to su properly support Unreal Engine 4 still quite yet. Later, it did got that for, for an update, so now they could actually properly... Pro so what they did is, they, had, according to Yuji Ori, they had to rebuild the game almost entirely uh, through specifically the new li Unreal Engine 4 library that, that uh, Epic made for the Switch. So basically, again, uh, so in, in other cases like Nino Kuni 2, again, the game was originally made with the x86 of the ps4 in mind and then later pc um so when it came to putting it on the switch they had to cut the frame rate down to 30 because the game was already uh uh made specifically to that uh, otherwise they would have to i guess decrease i guess they i guess they didn't want to decrease the visuals mm -hmm. uh, and I, and they thought that it would be better to just you know have the frame rate because i personally would have downgraded the visuals but whatever. I uh, guess to be fair, it can depend. Like, well, in a game that's definitely going for spectacle, I can understand cutting the frame rate instead of the graphics. Now, I will say this, eight times out of ten, I'm usually going to be for just cutting down on the graphics because, yeah, supposedly compared to the ultra-high definition version, it looks ugly. But honestly, I think that Switch version still managed to look relatively fine, honestly, in their oh, own sure. way. Oh, sure. Oh, sure, Kakarot looks good on the Switch. It's just that um, it's one of those cases where, uh, okay, w w when it comes to Unreal Engine 4 games, it's easy. Because, like I said, Epic made a library of uh, UE4 specifically for the Switch, so it's very easy for developers to do that now. When it comes to games that run on other engines, though, now that's a whole other story. used to be such great friends. But to, yeah, to bring this back to the point of this game, though, I do get the feeling that possibly having to port this to other consoles may have also limited some of the things they could do in the game. Especially also with the architecture of the consoles they had to work with. I remember, the PS3 was always a deterrent on that front. Part of me does wonder if things could have worked out better if they just let them make the PC version. And then, after that had been released and all good, then see if maybe it would be good for ports and everything. And I know, I, I, I will admit, to the public, it may have seemed like something cheap, like a timed exclusive. Which, you know, honestly, this is why dev companies need to be allowed to be more transparent with their consumers. Because I tell you, if dev companies were allowed to be more transparent with their consumers more often than not, and explain certain things, well, then we may not have had a lot of these misunderstandings before. Of course, mm -hmm. there is such a thing as too transparent. Look at Everwild. Anyway, there you go. Our last upgrade of the TND is uh, that we don't require any more TND energy. As Excellent. a basic a general, as a thank you at the end, towards the end of the game, we are given essentially infinite amount of power, which allows us to basically have a power trip. So you do say you have unlimited power? Literally. Okay. Uh, it's, 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 interesting you say, it's, it's, it's interesting you say that, Joe, about the whole too, too much transparency thing, because one of the things that uh, that I really recently, thanks to Brando's Lightning Returns review, was how apparently during the hype, one of the... This is interesting, because Teo knows, because uh, Teo might remember how back when that game was about to come out, I was basically the one get, delivering news at the, at, the, at the Lightning and the Lightning Saga topic, basically, when it comes to that game. Uh -huh. Teo might remember that. And um, and I missed that one apparently. Apparently, Jova, one of the things that Kitaze said is that they worked very hard to make sure that none of the outfits that Lavin can wear in that game would reveal her ass. But the outfits uh, are sure uh, pretty okay. It's like, it's like, it's like a, 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 I mean, don't get me wrong. It's cool that you're doing that so you don't sexualize the character, but why would you tell people that? 
And honestly, honestly, this is kind of rich given how they made a big note about how each outfit changes Lightning's figure as well. Yeah, and like he, and like he said, the wish result compensates instead on the armpit of the department. Well, oh, right. Right. <laughs> you can't change it. Hmm. hmm. Like, okay, I, is the armpit thing really that much a thing? Like, what is up with yes, that? Sir. Jova, it, it's more of a thing that the moment you actually notice it, the moment, uh, you know, it's, it's, it becomes much more noticeable each time you actually see it. Yeah, that was... That and for was all the talk about not focusing on the butt, well, they sure focused on the boobs. Mm-hmm. Which is I mean, kind of ironic, given how it seemed like they were trying to avoid focusing on the boobs in 13. Well, for Lightning, specifically. Yeah, because for, for Neil, they kept focusing on her legs. Which is funny, even the, her voice actress likes her legs. Like, okay, <coughs> to be fair, we have seen changes in the character models, most notably with Snow, over the course of the three games, so... Well, um, whatever. Anyway, the point is that now we have to get back to uh, Dr. Barisov, and uh, with this we should be actually be able to actually, you know, breach the singularity and try to change Hold the past. On, Let me see if I can open the door for you. Am I changing the future? Uh, not exactly. Boy, is this gonna be a fun report to write? Yeah, our our team leader is dead. Uh, I was conscripted into a basically a time war that nobody will remember. Mm -hmm. Man, Norg is not, no, Norg is not gonna be pleased. <laughs> uh? What's with that basically, rainbow what... box filter? It's because, again, we, we got hit by another, uh, you know, wave of the Singularity. Oh, I heard a, I heard an Ace Attorney sound effect there for a second. No. <laughs> there we go. Right, if I recall correctly, we're about to... Be, reach the, the final place. So with things getting trippier and trippier the closer we get to the end here, do you think that yeah, this is a stealth representation not... of the development of the game? So, so potentially. It's still not a lot when you really get down to it, um, but I appreciate the effort of trying to make things a bit more you know, trippy than they need to be. I do hope we'll at least get a good final boss encounter or something at the end. Again, Joel, I'll just wait and see. Alright. Oh god, it's gonna be what's her name, isn't it? <coughs> Ow. There we go. I think we um no actually no I'm not moving forward yet. What if this was supposed to happen? Go on, go on, Pedro. When it comes to specific engines that may not have been made with the switch in mind, now that becomes a might become more of a more of a difficulty, not an impossibility, mind you, but definitely a bit more difficulty. And it depends on whether or not they have the resources and the the time to do it properly. Um, when it comes to 
when it comes when it comes to the to the switch ports of uh, to the switch port of uh, Nino Kuni 2, it works just fine because that game is not particularly demanding to begin with anyway. Uh, Kakarot is the same thing. That game is not particularly demanding demanding either, uh, and that game already runs on Edit UE4, so it was going to be easy either way. But when it comes to, I'm actually quite surprised that. Um, Teo, do we know like how do the Crisis games run on um, on Switch? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I haven't checked it anyway. Is that actually quite surprised considering how those games uh, that the Crisis, the Cry Engine, remember, the Cry Engine was the <laughs> engine that originally gave Sonic Boom so much trouble. Yeah. So... <laughs> Crytek prided themselves on trying to build the engines that were mostly optimized for PC. I wouldn't be too surprised if they managed to rework the trilogy so that it works better on console this time. I do remember by the time 2 and or 3 um, came out, uh, there were some minor controversy because people, um, you know, suspected that, that those sequels were done with the consoles in mind and thus they were a downgrade to begin with, even on PC. But again, I do not know the full story, nor I actually did play those uh, in any capacity yet. I am planning on getting the, the trilogy myself. Uh, um, at some point, uh, but until then, I really don't know anything about, so that I can say, you know, particular on the matter. Same goes for. Okay, I forgot. Did the Mass Effect Legendary Edition got released on the Switch as well? Uh, I think so. I'll have to look it up. But I... Okay, I think it did. I, I, my my instinct memory tells me that it did. Um, especially, it would be a bit of a, you know consolation prize after the Wii U was supposed to get all three titles but only got three before EA chickened out. Yeah, they, they released the three. Like they were supposed to release the other two, but right after releasing three, EA essentially breached the contract because they believed that the conditions of the Wii U were too restrictive for them. Man, it's, it's, Again, it's, uh, you guys talked more about Activision but uh, e and Ubisoft, but EA was the one who really screwed over Nintendo with the Wii U. It's just an effect of a lighting. Pure he die. Once the singularity is destroyed, the truth of history will be restored. All right. Go on now, Kip. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, this game for some about reason, now I, I got equipped with the with the revolver. Yeah. Okay, but that I mean. This game, this game where it says about the Axis Italy as opposed to uh, the Soviet Union. Anyway, let's just place the bomb here. Nothing to see here, kind scientist. I'm just placing an explosive. Someone set up plus the bomb. We get fried. I. Uh, shouldn't you escape? Ah, there we are. Wait, but it's still... I guess you can but say... But why did nothing change? Oh. Trip down memory lane, Captain. You look surprised. All that effort to destroy the singularity when all I had to do was simply rebuild it. Shit. Now, so what was the point of that, then? The TM. <laughs> Don't rankle. We're missing something, but we can figure it out. We can still set things right. Cow. Only the victors rewrite the history books. And you lost. Oh, no, you don't. Uh... Really? I don't know why he didn't shoot him first. But... I know, right? Also. Only the victors rewrite the history books. That's it. The singularity is not the problem. You went back in time and saved Demichev yeah. from we being killed in the We were the cause of all building. of these because we accidentally Remember? saved Demichev at the beginning of the game. 
As the Yahtzee pointed out in his review, this is extremely obvious and the game is trying to pass it as a big twister yeah. when it's really not. <laughs> like, gee, guy who we may have helped back then and, you know, he's hasn't factored changed. into the plot and whatsoever before. To change back. You cannot let Demetrius live. So, what to do then? It won't work. Oh. You've already tried that and failed. Huh? Don't you remember who else was there, Captain? Yeah, Wright? I remember. Yeah. yeah, turns out all the writings, it's stuff that another version of us did because this is not the first time apparently that we tried this. And the guy who tried to stop us back then was us. That's why we were with Ray Baker. That other man. Remember, though, it also said not you. to trust her so for can... some reason. You are it also trust nobody. Which means the only way to what also said not to trust it's her, which I assume is. You mean kill himself? You know, you female leader. Yeah, our, the only it's solution at this point is to travel back in time and literally kill ourselves, stopping about. from saving Demi Trap. But I will suggest if you throw mention, I will suggest instead to kill Demi Trap while being carried. But unfortunately, the game doesn't count this option. Yeah, this feels a little railroaded, yes. Sir. Oh my god! So, it's here's what we can do. We can listen to Barry's offer and turn back in, to go back in the past to, you know, kill ourselves. Or listen to Demi Trap and uh, instead kill Barry's offer and be his second in command. Yes, trust the guy who was just a few seconds ago trying to kill us. But that's the you thing, know, as Demichev puts it, we don't really have a present to come back to. So at this point he tells us that we might as well take as much than what we have right now. No, you know, see, I have to say, for a guy who just got shot, he's doing remarkably well. Because we shot him in the hand. He's a mass murderer, a dictator. You must stop him at all costs. Use the TMD on the singularity. Travel back in time and kill yourself. <laughs> well, just go and kill yourself. It's that like simple. Attractive offer. Or you can prove your yeah okay you. you know it's yes. funny we were talking about bioshock I infinite earlier yeah this is like one of the issues i have with bioshock infinite we'll ending and how railroaded continue. that felt too all right let's start the first by yeah killing barry's off i see you have what it takes to rule the world All right, right, let's see what ending we get of this. Uh. Chancellor Demichev is the only survivor of Katorga 12. Any mention of Barasov is wiped from history. Of course. With the TMD at your disposal, you and Demichev now control the singularity. Katorga 12 becomes pivotal in Demichev's final push to remove all remnants of rebellion against his leadership. As commander of the military... Yeah, and we actually grow more powerful being able to control thanks to the TNT, even the creatures of Katorga 12. ...and creatures in combat. You use them as a first wave assault in all major battles. Millions are forced into slave labor. Yay! ...singularity, and you at the helm of the military. Any pockets of resistance around the world are weeded out. Mere 12 proves difficult at first, but with the TM. Even Mere 12 side, actually gets crushed by us. In the years that follow, tensions build within the ruling Russian dictator. But uh, your knowledge of advanced weaponry and control of the TMD allows your support to grow. Some believe you are more powerful yeah, than Chancellor Yeah, there's the hint of that you will actually take Demichev over, uh, you know, eventually the world by yourself by killing the Demichev. <laughs> there are even rumors he's created his own TMD. Conflict seems inevitable as the world once again finds itself in the midst of a cold war between two superpowers. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was expecting I was expecting to say this line did not age well. Alright, let's Make kill Damage Heavy this time. Yeah. It's, I, this time. I, you know, I get the feeling to you that the game really wants you to go with this Captain, ending instead. You just killed the most powerful man in the world. But this changes nothing. To correct history, you must go back in time and stop yourself from saving Demetrev in the burning building. So why not? Okay, so now it's changed to stopping ourselves. Again, why can't we just kill Why don't Demetrev? you just talk to yourself and say, no. We did try, remember, at the beginning of you were not present at the beginning of the game. There is another version of the Sabbath that tries to stop it, but don't bring them closer. 
everybody gets killed. There you go, we're at we're that point yet. So instead of just talking, we need to shoot ourselves. I um, mean, you could just shoot them at you. I did try it, it's exactly what I tried to do here. And? And you can. So. Because! Just because! Yeah, no, that's. There you go. I and we, di we do die on the spot, leaving the TND wearing the rubble. So, I'm sure nothing will happen on this. And. What? You got something on your title. Oh my god, it's a mobile. You switched the language settings to you. I don't know why they keep making us do this run. It's not like we ever see anything. Military intelligence. What a joke. Um, yes, sir. Hammer 2 1, maintain the speed and hit it. Oh. Yeah. I'd never get tired of seeing that. Yeah, turns out that uh, that is all probably made 2 plus 2 by finding the TMD in the rubble and use that to advance society so that Russia still did take over the world, but hopefully in a more peaceful manner. Who so, knows? What, so what's the freaking difference? And for some reason, we're alive that again, Dani's too. Of allegedly is less of an asshole than Damien Chef, I suppose. Also, so what was the uh, uh. so what was the point of all the words that said don't trust her? Because as far as we know, I guess the female lead really is dead. Again, Jova, just wait. The game is not over yet. Okay. Still though, how is the protagonist alive now? Anyway, to the delight instead of dreams, uh, we can decide instead to not do any of this shit because you know what? I'm kind of fed up of being puppeteered here by both of you, you know, telling me what I'm supposed to do. I'm a fucking America, so taste freedom. <laughs> One and two. No. Okay, okay, okay. With Dr. Barisov and Chancellor Demichev dead, the knowledge of E99 and Katorga 12 dies with them. You disappear and become a legend in the years to come. Most believe you never existed in the first place. The whereabouts of the TMD are unknown. It's different, at Weeks least. pass before the bodies of Demichev and Yeah, but unfortunately because of that, the uh, Mir-12 basically puts, up, puts a hunt on us. It was the first step in ending Russia's grip on the world. The is the Soviet Union collapses. Erupt across the globe as casualties rise into the millions. With their newfound freedom, Mir 12 grows in strength and influence. While they continue their fight against the Russian military, they also begin a manhunt for Dr. Barasov's murderer. To this day, they have been unsuccessful. With the TMD removed from Katorga 12, the singularity destabilizes. A massive explosion destroys the eastern coast of Russia and stretches as far as the prison state of Alaska. A group of Katorga 12 creatures escapes to the Russian mainland and overruns New China. There are rumors of a secret army taking over parts of the former United States. Yeah, it's basically implied that you become the, the new de facto president of the United States, of so, all well, potentially mostly a dictator as well. believed his plans involve world domination. His following grows every day. Some claim he is able to summon incredible power, as if he controlled the hand of God himself. And there you have it. Um, there is a post-credit scene, so stay tuned for for that after the credits. But yeah, the game is pretty much over at this point with this. Uh, um, and we see some cute concept arts while we while we have the credits. So we, you can start your final thoughts. Like I said, keep in mind that the, the post-credit scene still has some kind of value, especially considering what Jova was saying. So. Um, so. Well, um, I gotta say, I did enjoy the uh, kill both the, of them ending the best yeah. <laughs> because it was at least different. Because I mean, in the other in the other two endings, it's pretty much the same thing, just with like one very minor difference. Whereas in uh, the fuck you both ending, you become the ruler of a country. So that's different. Well, even, even in Demichev's ending, uh, he gives you control of the United States, uh, and because of your growing power, there are rumors that you want to, you know, amass the state against him, uh, you know, for leading it back to a state similar to the one of the Cold War. Yeah, but in the uh, in the uh, 
Fuck you both ending as I'm calling it. You don't even have to worry about that. You just do all the hard work yourself. <laughs> it's more it's more rewarding that way. I will um, admit, I was pleasantly surprised that that actually is an option. Yeah, me too. Given how yeah. otherwise <laughs> railroaded the ending is. I can is. also tell you this, uh, just for a bank technicality problem. The game auto saves, uh, so that it brings you back uh, right before making the choice. So thankfully, this is a case, unlike with James Cameron's Avatar, where you don't have to play the entire game again just for the endings. So. Nice. <laughs> right. As for the rest of the game, it's just kind of mediocre. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, the story ideas are interesting. It's just the execution wants all that uh, great. It's saved by some decent acting performances, and that at 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 the, at the fuck you both ending. But um, but other than that, it, it's just one of those games that just kind of bl that kind of just blends in with almost all the other ones of its kind that released around this generation. Mm -hmm. Same, but you know, it's like there you go. Deji. Man, time travel sucks, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, in the end, I guess we really did become a singularity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this game looks fine. This game looks fine. Like, very... Looks like Bioshock on a budget. <laughs> I, I'm not, on a smaller budget. Uh, but... Yeah, it's, it has neat, neat concepts, and I wouldn't mind them um, revisiting this just to flesh things out with, you know, with a different story, different scenario, etc. Unfortunately, that the Raven Studios of today is kind of different from the ones who made this game and um, will experience this whole game because of two factors. One, the excessive years spent working on Call of, and support for Call of Duty, and second, the unfortunately mass... Uh, uh, you know, firing uh, that has been happening in recent time, courtesy of uh, you know Activision. Yeah. I I, only, I can only hope that the people who got laid off uh, can actually find themselves in another studio and keep working on what they can do best. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Um. I don't want to say this game is bad, and I do get it adds some strenuous circumstances behind it. Overall, I think it's a fine game, but um, I'm not sure if I'd say it was worth the full amount of price when it first came out. Like, mm -hmm. I I hate to call it it, but it does feel like budget Bioshock. Again, yeah. not not necessarily bad, and I have seen much much worse ripoffs done, but. I think, okay, I don't want to say it feels like they just threw everything at the wall and saw what stuck, but it does feel like they throw in a lot of stuff just because they can, or to fill out some quota here and there. Now, that's not to say that the designs aren't unique. The monsters are pretty keen in all their unique looks and everything. That said, I do wish that they could have spruced up some of the boss encounters more... And as for the final encounter, I guess it's just random stuff be happening and all that stuff. Yeah, you, you are, unfortunately, we don't get even a final boss uh, in that kind of sense. Uh, it's just a couple of extra hordes. Uh. As for the story, the story does have some interesting bits, but a lot of bits, it does get a bit formulaic. Like, hey, I'm gonna go back to the past, and this somehow affects everything so that Things are to come as past, even though technically we were changing things, so shouldn't that mean that us previously doing this or that also got changed and whatnot, and yeah, time travel sucks. Mm -hmm. As for the... It's... Sorry, go on. Uh, no, um, go on, what were you gonna... It's also sad that uh, compared to stuff like, say, the Doomslayer from Doom 2016, our character doesn't really show what uh, he's thinking about uh, or what, he be, what, the, what his thoughts are until the very end when you have to make a choice. So, despite the stuff going around him and everything, he just really obeys without questioning. And unfortunately, unlike in Bioshock, we really don't have an ex you know any kind of justification or twist on why is he doing that. Uh, like, you know, I mean, at least with Bioshock, despite the protagonist not talking much, there was still a lot of story around him here and there. Here, no. Our, our main protagonist is kind of a loaf of bread as far as I'm concerned. 
He doesn't really speak much. We don't really get a semblance of his character. Even though they make a big deal about his character in the end. Like, it feels and, like Bioshock... In case you're wondering, there is no such thing as a New Game Plus where you trace back the steps and you are, you're you supposed to be the one actually writing on the walls what happened, not really. Yeah, which does make it feel like... Honestly, I wonder if that was even originally the intent or just something a that concept, they wrote yeah. on the quick here and there because it feels so out of place Rush, here and there. And like, yeah, yeah like you said, normally we would have a segment where we actually do end up playing through the past and whatnot, but no, we're just told here and there. As for the characters, I already mentioned the main protagonist ain't anything to write home about. As for a lot of the other characters, it's a relatively small cast, and heck, I still can't even remember what the girl's name was supposed to be like. It feels like she's in, and then she's out. Apparently she'll be back later, but as far as we know, she's dead, as per what the story has told us. And, like, I guess she helped us along the way? As for Beresov, he seems nice enough, but then it turns out, no, he was just playing you, and he will also turn evil and whatnot. Well, that, that really depends on your point of view. If you actually went through the entire game actually believing that he's still, you know, relatively good-hearted, him still taking over the war with Russia, um, doesn't seem to be that bad of a prospect, especially because it seems to be portrayed more in a positive light, even with the blue color, and in more of an age of enlightenment rather than a dictatorship that rules with Iron Fist like damage that will do. I think I would agree more if we got to see more of a semblance of that, because all we see is essentially just a rundown statue of his. Like, I don't think we ever really get any clear sign that Russia is absolutely better off with him in charge. Now, we can maybe get a semblance from his personality. But all the same, I do wish they had done more with him in Damage App. I guess, arguably with Beresov, he's fine enough as your mission control kind of guy. Damage App as a villain, though, is undercooked as all heck. Oh, he just managed to survive getting riddled with bullets. Okay. Multiple times. And, uh, well, not much else to him. Now, granted, you get it, he's the bad guy, stop him and all that, but... Yeah... Honestly, he does not have the same presence that, say, Andrew Ryan or Sophia Baker had. Which is really a shame, honestly. And aside from that, there's not really any characters we can really talk much about. Oh, sure, there's our partner who Guess dies like the, the best bird. friend he is, so... Alright, yeah. we're about to get a post credit scene, so... If you forgot, if you forgot um... The, the female supporting character, yeah, I forgot her name too, um, <laughs> she was supposed to help you during the assault on the ship, but she apparently got shot and fell off the, there you go, fell off the dock, so, and apparently there was one last uh, impulse of turning people in the past uh, before actually, you know, Darius all rescued us. So. That changed her as well, I guess? And then she gets eaten by a shark. No. So, However, she was still very wounded. So she went into Dr. Barry's office that he had. Do you get this right. ending regardless of which ending you chose? Yes, uh, yes it's a post credit scene regardless of what you do. Okay... And if you remember, this is the same notebook that she showed us the first time we met her. She's the one who kickstarted the foundation of Mir 12 and actually, you know, searching for the actual research for us. So it's a time loop. Of... It's a time loop. And then she died of blood loss because she didn't get that stop okay so in that case so again what was the point of our older selves writing for us not to trust her in particular like it seemed like they were hyping up something with her but it's more of a case where we kind of were exhausting all the options uh, you know at that point uh. i think it just ties into how sadly okay this is the kind of story where you feel like they've got something cooking they're definitely leading up to something that's cooking 
And then it just ends up flat in the end, which is... Okay, look, it's by no means a terrible, horrible story, but the letdown does kind of hurt a bit. Like, I was expecting some neat plot twist or whatnot, but, like, no, I guess she was just the one who formed Mirror 12, and that's nice. See, this one was... The the entire angle of Mirror 12 being a parallel to, you know, Anonymous, uh, it's not really even expanded that much. uh. Like, I feel like like this twist would resonate more with me if I knew more about... (laughs) the overall world and characters. Like, oh, sure, yeah, we know the scenario, but do we ever really get to truly experience what this world is like? Not really, given how we're pretty much stuck on an island the whole time. Hmm. Again, I don't want to say that this is a bad game. I just feel like it could have been immensely better, and I do now get what you mean about you can tell that this could have been way better, because, no, the potential's there. There's a lot of good aspects overall it's just that unfortunately for a multitude of reasons the full potential was not met sadly that's simple as that mm-hmm. all right pedro um okay how I'll, I'll i'll list it like this uh you are me and i am you no shit shit <laughs> yep that's pretty much all i can say about that ending I mean, it's fine. Again, like to, much like most of these shooters we've been doing, it's fine. I guess it's just not really. Um, I just I, I don't think it does anything too spectacular, though. It's just kind of you know a very again a, a, once again a very serviceable shooter, but nothing that I go out of my way to play. I, 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 like the I mean the plot is mostly okay, but then of course it goes bonkers at this climax, and it's just. I mean, a bit, yeah, it's nice that they try to go bonkers, but I don't know, like, I feel like by this point that was a bit, you know, already, like, kind of done. You know what's ironic? For as bonkers as they try to go, it's railroaded in the end, really. Right down to you not even being able to be clever with, you know, shooting Demichev instead of killing yourself. I still want to see what, like, see, now that could have been the one way to actually win and just revert everything to normal, but, but nope. Yes, yeah, not. Uh... Like, if they gave a good enough reason, sure, I'd be down with it, but they don't. The Yeah, it's fine. The gameplay looks like it's fine. Like I said, there's nothing particularly about it that's not worth it, at least in my eyes, that I can see. So, it's, uh, again, it seems like it's perfectly serviceable if, you, if you're into it. But yeah, I can under- I can see why this game is, in, is, is kind of obscure nowadays, and you don't really see people talking about it, because it's... Doesn't sound like it's something that's exactly going to, you know, blow your mind or anything. Mm-hmm. Go on. All right, I'll conclude then. It's fine, like I said multiple times, but you can kind of tell how rushed it is and how incomplete it feels in all the places. It just begs for it to, for you to see more in general overall, more locales, you know, more enemy variety, more weapon variety which again i had to reiterate i'm sorry but insomniac this is not and when it comes to weapon design these have cute effects but they look especially with the 99 but they do look kind of bland especially for how much they're hyped like you know glorified seeking missiles and all so unfortunately it's not really meeting up that kind of expectations the plot is interesting for a first play but not really something that you will replay the game to see, oh, this is what they meant with that. There's no real replay bonus when it comes to that. And uh, really, I get the idea that that's the reason also why they allow you to see all the endings you know, in one go, probably because of that. Uh, but I can't say that I hate it. It's still much better than something like the Battleship video game for comparison. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree there. It still shouldn't have been sold at 60 bucks, but again, that's mostly a thing of the time. But these days, if you want to get it on Steam, you know, for a cheap price, might as well. It's cute, you know, it's cute in a way, but extremely undercooked. And unfortunately, because of that, the game suffers. If... If uh, Raven Studios uh, miraculously re- want to, you know, revisit this game in some kind of fashion, I'm more, I'm more up for it. Even though I'm not having that much confidence, uh, it might have the, you know, the the quality 
uh, that the team used to have back in the day. We will say we will have to see. But I don't want to give up all completely. So on that front, uh, that's pretty much it for the game. The closest of a segue that I can give to you potentially would be, I guess, what, as I mentioned in one of the early parts, one of the Call of Duty plots. Uh, but because, like I said, a lot of those seems to be heavily protected by copyright, it's not a guarantee. So we'll have to see on that front. As for what I recorded uh, you know, after this video, we'll see. You'll be able to see it in due time. So until then, see ya. Ta-ta. Yeah. Adios.